Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm going to do Journal 40. Uh, but for the for, for the next bunch of minutes, I'm going to introduce it because I think some commentary about what I'm talking about will help clear, especially what I'm not talking about, um, is going to be helpful for when I actually get to the journal. So the title is Easy Come, Easy Keep, and it's referencing the ease of artistic creation and how that influences valuation, appreciation by the creator. Um, now, at no point uh, am I referring to or referencing AI, because I mean, that would be the easiest content generation possible because you're not the one generating it. Um, for me to, to value or appreciate something, it needs human effort. You can make the case for animals. It could be like biological effort or something. But in particular, human effort. It has to come from a place of emotion, which computers don't, don't have, um, for me to receive it as art um, and appreciate it accordingly. So it's just a sad world, I think, uh, in which... People who who have no skill in in drawing or painting become the artists, uh, and and people who can't sing or or play an instrument they become the musicians, and people who can't write they become the writers. Um, I mean that's just that's DJing. There's nothing against DJs, but that's not primal creation. That's like tertiary. That's 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 sampling the work of others. Um, and so if we see people who have, I mean, deep fundamental skills, talents in an artistic field squeezed out of that field by people with an utter lack of talent, but who have computer literacy, you know, or like a ton of money, that's a sad world, I think. Um, now, every time I put this idea forward, every time I say, oh, some people agree with me, I, I say this and some people are delighted that my opinion is, is consistent with theirs. But <clears throat> other times, if, if people disagree with me, their response every time is the same boring cliche. And they think it's original, but it's the same exact, maybe the phrasing is a little bit different here and there, but it goes like this. Well, that's just progress. That's the future. You know, throughout history, there have always been people who cling to the past, terrified of progress, afraid of advancement, um, you know, quaking about the future. You're just clinging to the past or, you know, whatever, some, something like that. And there's, there is truth to that. But it's surprisingly little, it, it, you know, defending some particular technology by pretending that every critic is simply terrified of progress is nonsense. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's just unexamined mob mentality. And if you just examine it for a minute, if you for 10 seconds, it's clearly false. <clears throat> so History is long. I mean, just look at history. It's long. Throughout history, nobody has been deeply upset and, 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 and you know, opposed to improvements in sanitation. You know, oh, I just, I miss the good old days when my mug of tea would give me cholera. That's not nobody, right? Or like food preservation and refrigeration, we're all on board uh, with that stuff, no matter who you are. Um, food availability, you know, and especially like nutritional uh, availability, you know, in some parts of the world, if uh, poorer communities are, are too reliant on whatever their staple food is and batoke or something like that, we see stunting of growth, more widespread access to nutritional, optimal nutritional profiles, we're all uh, delighted for that progress. Medicine, nobody objects to the advancement of medicine. Uh, you know, maybe it's sterilization. Medicine advances in a lot of ways. Uh, um, you know, surgical uh, techniques uh, that improve success rates, uh, you know, obstetric advancements or kids aren't all dying in, in childbirth. Um, diagnostic instruments and tools, you know, radiology, uh, things like that, like antibiotics and other medications, so you don't die of like a skin knee. Um, what else? Like architecture, 
you know, so like our homes are safe, the improvements there and our workplaces um, are safe, transportation, advancements in navigation and and even like space exploration. I mean, I, I realize there are conspiracy theorists who are, you know, the moon landing is a hoax, and, and but nobody's like this really upset about a picture of an astronaut on the moon, you know? Um, <clears throat> education, you know, I, I work in education and advancements in, 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 in the, the, distribution of information that doesn't upset anybody that's universally accepted as good the criminal justice system improvements in in fairness you know so it's not like the aristocrats are getting off scot free and and the poorer communities are are in prison and and living in squalor you know water heaters nobody wants a cold shower um the addition of of color to television um the light bulb you know oh, i just man i wish we could live in darkness you know, like plumbing oh I, man i just want to shit in a hole you know it, it's a cliche that you know people hate advancement and 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 th that does not survive scrutiny so for the most part it's not that people are afraid of change it's that people who are proposing change and proposing to to profit off of it are afraid of criticism but th but that said there is truth to this sometimes there are instances in which um, we do have weird reactions to innocuous uh, change. And usually this is in sort of changes of status quo. It, it's usually in emotional areas, things like music. Music is probably the best uh, example. So let's all pretend it's 1965. Um, like you look out your window and everyone's lawn is just naturally green. And, but you're at a music you're at like a venue and, and, and you see Bob Dylan taking the stage with an electric guitar and you're furious. You know, you're like up in arms. I mean, it's like a national controversy, but Bob Dylan, what he did was he saw this technological opportunity and, and the, the movement of music into this new territory. And he sort of stepped into it to explore it. And people are furious and that's weird. You know, that is a little bit weird. Like where's the threat in that? Um, and it didn't end with Dylan, you know, uh, like in the nineties as, as bands as sort of, you know, rock bands were beginning to incorporate some uh, maybe modern music trends uh, in in their style. Uh, they're like the, the crowds, like oh, you're dead to me. You know, you, like oh, you're a sellout. But the difference between this, between these these bands being like sellouts and AI, is the songwriters were still writing the songs. You know, like the sellouts were the ones laboring over every note and laboring over every word and the arrangements of their music. Um, and I mean, just sacrificing themselves with sleepless nights and like drugs to alter their mindset um, for the, for the, you know, creation of their art. What they weren't doing, what these musicians, the sellouts weren't doing was like delegating all creativity to robots and then um, just like selling whatever the robots give to them at a premium. You know, that's not, that's not music. I mean, that's, that's marketing. It's something, there's skill. But it's not music. You know, if you are trying to persuade people um, to purchase like a heart, I mean, like a literally heartless because, you know, robots don't have hearts. Uh, this heartless, soulless uh, commercial merchandise, that's not art. That's not what art is. So when I say easy come, easy keep, what I'm talking about is emotional, effort-filled, artistic uh, creations. Now, I'm not disparaging AI. There are so many places where AI is increasingly critical for 
you know, ongoing human civilization, all those things I listed, uh, you know, medicine and transportation and uh, all that, and, and a million more, there are a million more uh, examples of progress in areas that AI will help contribute to, you know, climate management, th things like this, that we're all eager to uh, see. But even like within, within the arts, you know, like within music, AI has roles. It's not art, I would, but it's it's mostly like what if scenarios. So you might be watching this on YouTube. When you're done watching, you can go uh, watch your favorite band perform a song they've never performed. Like, let's say hypothetically, uh, you want to see what it would have been like if like Chester Bennington, um, his rendition of the best part about being a woman, whatever the song is called, you can, you know, that can exist with AI and it can sound very realistic and, and it's interesting, but it's not real. You know, it's fake. Um, it can be entertaining, but not in an emotional way. There's no emotion connected uh, to it. And so I just think it's a sad world in which our entertainments lack emotion and are fake. That's all I'm talking about with, with AI. And, and what I'll be talking about as I read the journal now is um, human efforts in artistic creation. So again, journal number 40, first Arzox, day 13, 2023, morning, easy come, easy keep. Hi, everyone. I have more to say about audiences, but before saying it, let's go on a quick side quest on the topic of writing. In general, writing is incredibly hard to do, but typing is incredibly hard to read, so one must put in the work if the work is to be read except for those rarest instances in which the perfect words arrive as if by stork sans labor. On those days, it feels like I simply turn on a faucet and fully revised sentences flow onto the page. Perhaps they require a little bit of purification, a round or two through the Brita, but even in their raw state, they're almost servable. That's not my usual experience though. Usually every paragraph feels like a billion piece jigsaw puzzle. I keep swapping out pieces, this one for that one, piece after piece and nothing fits. I used to think that the quality of a final draft was affected by the quantity of revisions required to complete it. I assumed readers could tell if the baby arrived by stork or dystocia, as though every difficult delivery bore detectable signs of complication. Strain always leaves a mark. And so I had a tendency to overvalue the easy passages and undervalue the difficult ones. Today, I realize no reader has any idea how many rounds of edits went into a sentence, a paragraph, a chapter. Only the writer does. All the reader can do is discriminate good writing from bad. They have no further insight because the product reveals nothing of the process. This epiphany should have changed my relationship with prose, but it didn't. I continue to overvalue faucet composition and undervalue watering hole pilgrimages, even though in the end, the taste is identical. At least according to everyone else, they taste the same. Not to me though, because I affix emotions to their creation and emotions influence every relationship. Think about difficult friends and family members with whom any interaction is an exhausting experience. There's a tendency to keep them at a distance. They just consume too much energy, deplete our emotional capital. But loved ones who need little investment, those are calls I can answer, invitations I can accept. This says nothing about affection. I may love difficult people even more, their complexity providing something deeper to appreciate, but I prefer to do my appreciating at a distance. And the same applies to writing, for me anyway. 
Between 2007 and 2017, I probably wrote 200 songs. Most of them are objectively bad. Subjectively, they aren't much better. But there are a dozen-ish that I harbor some fondness for. They're the songs that came easily. I can still listen to the ones that took me 10 minutes to write because their melodies remind me that life isn't always so hard. It usually is, but once in a while it relents and offers a song, like charity for a struggling artist. By comparison, it pains me to listen to my strenuous recordings. I can't hear the lyrics without simultaneously hearing the 30 iterations I didn't settle on, or my phrasing and the notation. That simple chord change was a sleepless series of alternative decisions, and I don't know if I chose the right one. And the same is true with my book. Easy come, easy keep. Everything else I delete. In the end, this makes them better to me. Okay, that's journal number 40. Uh, the see, like leaf blowers just came outside and it's distracting me. But uh, my closing hope, I hope your emotional connections are real and authentic. And I hope your artistic creation comes um, with without effort or with ease today. Okay, bye.